coming up on the Venus Cuckoldress podcast. They see kink and BDSM and they're just like, oh, I have to get latex. I got to get whips. I got to do this and I got to do that. And that's really not it. You can be sensual. You can be soft and still humiliate him. Yes. And I think once you realize that you don't have to be that mean, cruel bitch, you can be just the woman that you are and just start slow at the bottom of things and just start incorporating a few little things. He's going to be so happy. When I also think about humiliation, I think about humility. And he is like wanting to lower himself to his queen. So little things like when my bull is home, you sit on the floor. He wants something from you. Well, (laughs) make him do something that's a little embarrassing. You know, like, hey, can I watch? Sure, you can watch if you kiss me on my ass. Fuck an elf on the shelf. Hide magnum condoms, like extra, extra large condoms in surprise places. Yeah, like when he's fucking you and he's like, oh, I'm so deep inside you. Just laugh at him and be like, you don't know what deep is, baby. (laughs) Like, I can't really even feel you, so... (laughs) I don't, I'm not. I'm not with you because you go deep. <laughs> we go deep in other ways, baby. You are now listening to the Venus Cuckoldress podcast, a place to learn all things cuckolding for the curious the passionate and the sexually empowered woman who wants it all. Go to venuscuckoldress.com to subscribe to the podcast, ask a question for the show, and find the elusive Venus Vault, a sneak peek behind the bedroom door. Now sit back, make yourself comfortable, and let's dive right into this episode. Episode of the Venus Cuckoldress Podcast. I'm your host, Venus. Thank you so much for joining me. And I'm just going to start off with a really big announcement that I have for you. <laughs> this came in just a little while ago. I didn't know it, but the Venus Cuckoldress Podcast, this little podcast has been nominated for an award. Can you believe it? by the Canadian Podcasting Awards. Um, And I was just like, wow. (laughs) It's nominated for Best Adult Series. Fucking awesome. So I was just so thrilled to to, and surprised to learn about that and just super happy about it. Um, Now, people have been asking me, can I vote? Can I vote? And unfortunately, the answer is probably not (laughs) because... If the only way that you can vote, it's an industry voting um, system. So the only way that you can vote is if you are Canadian and you have a Canadian podcast yourself, then you can vote on the nominees that are in uh, up for awards for for this. So <laughs> since most of my audience is in the United States, I doubt that's going to happen. But <laughs> if just in case you are Canadian and you have your own podcast, it would be super awesome if you would go and vote for that. That'd be pretty cool. Okay. What a show do I have for you today? I have Goddess Kayla. We're going to talk about humiliation. She is amazing. She really gets it. She knows how to do this properly. And she's here to teach us a little bit about what it really is and how to incorporate this into your relationship in like the easiest, most 
simple ways. And also, <laughs> she ramps it up as well to the most extreme. But <laughs> we had a lot of fun with that part. But this is for couples. This is for women. If you don't understand humiliation, if this has been something that you're just like, that makes no sense to me, I this is the, the episode for you. And I think that humiliation, teasing, whatever you want to call it, that's a part of, I would say, most or some cuckolding relationships. I think that is truly the most misunderstood part of this whole loving relationship dynamic. And I hear that misunderstanding from the vanilla world. I hear it from the kink world. I hear it from the swingers world. I mean, I don't really think many people really understand this. So this episode is going to help try to figure all of that out. So we have a common basic understanding of what this really is. And it is fun. That's all it is. It's fun. So I hope you walk away from this episode a little bit wiser, a little bit more understanding and a little bit empathetic to this whole idea of humiliation or teasing. And after you listen to this episode, you'll definitely want to check out our follow up moan chat that we're doing on the moan app myself and Kayla we're going to do a follow-up chat about this episode on humiliation so if you've got questions you're curious to learn a little bit more or you have some comments or you just want to listen in on the conversation that we're going to be having about this make sure you download the moan app if you have not already it's uh, the moan app and it's spelled M-O-N. So just look for it in the App Store, Apple Store, Google Play, whatever the fuck. It's available for everybody. So, and it's free. So download it and make sure you join our chat, which is going to be Tuesday, August the 9th at 12 p.m. Pacific time. And it is live. So make sure that you do put it into your calendar so you don't want to miss that one. All right, a couple more announcements before we dive right into it today. Uh, there's going to be another Pillow Talk event that's coming up, and it is live on Crowdcast. I will be hosting. It is going to be a lot of fun. And this one is a special Ask Me Anything Pillow Talk. So I get bombarded with DMs all across my platforms and people wanting advice. They want to ask a question. They want to share a story. They want to whatever. Uh, I get a lot of requests for that and I just don't have the ability to respond to them all. So if that is you, if you have a question, if you have a comment, you need some advice, whatever, this would be the proper event for you, this Pillow Talk event, because it's going to be Ask Me Anything. So this is going to be a lot of fun, and it is Friday, August 12th at 8 p.m. Pacific Time. The link with how to register for this event will be in the description notes for this podcast episode today. So just check that out if you want to register for that. That is also a live event, so you want to catch it when it happens. All right, lastly, Hot Wife Palooza 2 is coming up. And of course, it has sold out for the rooms at the Exotic Dreams Resort. So if you were hoping to be able to get a room at this hotel takeover party, you waited too long. <laughs> it's sold out. But the good news is, is that day passes are still available. And those are 15 hour day passes. So it's September 23rd and 24th is when this is happening. It's in sunny Palm Springs and the Exotic Dreams Resort. And it is going to be Lots of couples, lots of single guys, and a lot of fun. Like, listen to what is going on. <laughs> this is crazy. Okay, so on the Friday, it's apparently a sexy lingerie night. Um, and if you have a day pass, you can be there at 10 a.m. Actually, I should mention that. And it you can be there all the way until 2 a.m. So you can go to the sex, sexy lingerie night and hang by the pool all day socializing, listen to the music. Uh, there's going to be a live podcast by my friend, 
Doc Chocolate from the Bulls and Queens podcast. He's going to be there. Um, there's going to be body painters, exotic massage. Yes, please. And listen to this. A Sibian ride event. If you don't know what the Sibian is, damn. <laughs> My favorite sex toy of all time. <laughs> I mean, I tried a Sibian and I literally almost fucking shot to the moon. <laughs> it was amazing. Anyway, they're going to have some sort of Sibian ride event. So holy fuck. Yes, don't miss that. Um, there's also going to be speed dating. Interesting. I don't know really what that's going to look like. Uh, dinner and DJ. Um, and then the sexy lingerie dance party after that. Okay. 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 So that's Friday. Saturday. Saturday is apparently sexy BDSM night. Ooh. (laughs) And um, it's the same events as Friday, except changing the speed dating to speed BJing, like blow jobbing. I'm like, what? (laughs) I don't even know what the fuck this is, but it sounds interesting. (laughs) And then, of course, I mentioned this on the last podcast that there's going to be an award-winning film director and producer who's going to be there. His name is Roderick Stevens. He's uh, filming a documentary called Open. So he's going to be interviewing anyone who's willing uh, to participate in this documentary, which is pretty fucking cool. And then apparently Lifestylers Magazine's offering uh, free photo shoots as well at the party. So there you go. There's like a big ass, long ass list of things going on. And you can still get your day passes, but not a room. So if you're interested in signing up, you can just follow the link that's in the show notes for today's episode. It's going to be right there for you. All right. It is time to jump into this episode with Goddess Kayla. Are you ready? Because I'm ready. Let's do this. Here we go. All right, joining me on the show today, I have a very special guest, and I am so fucking excited about this. Listen up. I have Goddess Kayla, and she is in the top 1% of phone sex operators on Night Flirt, and she's a sapiosexual virtual femdom with a passion for femdom, sensuality, fetish, chastity, psychology, cuckolding, cross-dressing, by encouragement and female supremacy. So basically, she, I want to be her best friend. And <laughs> welcome to the show, Kayla. Are you ready for this? I am so ready for it. So thank you so much for having me, Venus. Ah, uh, okay. You know what? I reached out to Kayla because I've um, met her on the Moan app. And for those of you listening, you know, I haven't shut up about this app because I love it so much. And so her and I, we've done some chats in in the in the Moan app. I've listened to her speak. I was like, wow, she's like fucking amazing. So I thought she would be a perfect guest for the show. And I'm sure you all are going to agree because today... Today, we're going to have like a little mini masterclass in humiliation and teasing. So (laughs) who better to do this with me than Kayla? So Kayla, thank you so much for for joining me. Let's get right into it. First of all, before we get started and dive into the whole humiliation and teasing thing, um, let's just start off by a little background. Like what, how did you get started with all of this? So I have always been someone who was very hypersexual and always was attracted to kink and fetish, but it's pretty overwhelming, right? It's very overwhelming. And sometimes when you live in certain areas, you can't really access it either. And so when I was around 20 years old, I discovered a blog called redheels.com and it was this white guy's divorced white guy's blog at the age of 30 where he was rediscovering his sexuality and he was being a slut with a bunch of sluts and it was fun and I was reading that at 20 years old and I was like I want to be a slut too like I want to have all of that unashamed sex I want to have these open relationships and so at the age of 20 I started doing that 
And I started pursuing kink and all of those different things. And that kind of snowballed into cuckolding in my later 20s. And so I've done a lot. Yeah. And, and <laughs> I've done a lot and I'm really happy for it. It's been a lot of fun. That's amazing that at 20 years old, you you were like, you know, I'm going to venture off outside of the box of, you know, normal society, what they tell you to do kind of thing. And you were like, no, I'm, I'm going to go off in this other direction over here. At 20, yeah. at 20, I did not know what the fuck I was doing in my life. <laughs> well, I was fucking. <laughs> I was. And, you know, you feel shame about like, oh, my number, my number. I've had sex with eight men. I'm such a slut. And I learned that your number doesn't fucking matter. Like if somebody asks you what your number is, you just say one less than you, you fucking slut. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just a really liberating experience and um and it really just allowed me to have a lot of really good dirty sex. <laughs> and awesome. I, and and I think that's kind of one of the hot things about cuckolding is cuz it can allow people that same liberation. Yeah, I feel like cuckolding is like the opposite, the exact opposite of slut shaming. Yeah. And because like we all know what slut shaming is, we all we all heard about it. Maybe some of us have actually participated or slut shamed ourselves or whatever. Like we all know what that looks like and 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 sounds like. But what is the exact opposite? I'm like it's cuckolding. <laughs> it's got to be cuckolding because <laughs> you're not only you know accepted for that slutty side of you, but completely and totally adored, cherished and celebrated for it. Like where the fuck else do you get that from? Like <laughs> it's just amazing. Okay, so you kind of dove into like kink and fetish in your 20s during mm -hmm. this time when you were very like sexually, you know, unashamed of yourself. Um and then you closer to the end of your 20s found cuckolding. How did that come about? Tender. <laughs> Tender. And obviously, it's kind of like a common story. So um, I was in an open relationship. And I was swiping some, for some variety. And I came across this guy who was cute. But his conversation didn't hold my interest. And, and then all of a sudden, I got a message. And he said, I'm a sissy cuckold. And I didn't know what those words were. But all of a sudden, I was just like, you get a few extra minutes from me. Like, what is this sissy cuckold all about? And he was Middle Eastern, which made it even hotter. And so we met up for drinks. He wore panties. It was just fun. We went back to his house and we just explored that together. And it was hot and we're still really good friends. And so he was the very first person that kind of introduced me to kind of like the cross-dressing, humiliation aspect of the sissy play, but also cuckolding and how he just, you know, wanted me to have sex with men that were bigger. And it was just fucking hot. It really was. And so he wasn't, it wasn't really a cuckold relationship. It was m much more cuckold fetish play. Right. Um, but it definitely introduced me to the idea that this is definitely something that's for me because I've always dated and had relationships with these guys that I that could have been cuckolds I don't know <laughs> and and also had the need to have sex with other men that were just kind of different from them you know I wanted those two different sexual relationships and experiences yeah. and that's what cuckolding does so I was just like this is this is for me I like it Oh, I love that. I had the same reaction. I was like, wait a second. What? Tell me more. <laughs> mm -hmm. But okay, so two things I find fascinating about that story is number one, he's very ballsy to just drop that on you in a Tinder message. That is good for him. Brave as fuck. He and got what he wanted too. Yeah, I know. Right. So take a chance, guys. Like, you know, you don't have to be so fucking far hidden and locked in the closet all the time. Take a chance. Who knows? Maybe it is going to be something that is going to fit who she is, just like it fit who you are, just as like how it fits, fits who I am. But um, th the fact that he was able to, to 
go ahead and just drop that bomb on you like that? Like, fuck yes. That's it awesome. was also because in my Tinder bio, I had that I was a kinky, non-monogamous person. I there didn't know what cuckolding was, but I was kinky and non-monogamous and I was down for some fun. And that's what I was looking for. I was looking for, for a little bit of everything because like I said, I like variety. And so maybe not drop that message to just any any girl, but yeah. definitely the women that are open about their their sexuality in sort of that way. Those are great women that you can introduce to cuckolding. Absolutely. My first cuck boyfriend saw in my profile that I said I have no intentions on being monogamous. And so he was like, oh, maybe, <laughs> maybe this is a good one to like tell her. And so, yeah, it worked out. But yeah, maybe just be careful with who you drop that one on. <laughs> But yeah. the fact that you reacted in such a really curious way mm-hmm. is amazing because that's not the case in a lot of, of these situations where women do feel really like, oh my God, what the fuck is this? And just run mm-hmm. in the other direction. I've heard all about these situations. So the fact that you were curious about it and you wanted to learn more, I love that so much. So that's amazing that you're still friends with this guy. And uh, I really, really wish I could hear more more stories of women getting introduced in this way because I think it's just awesome. Mm-hmm. Okay, so so how did the whole night flirt thing get started? And tell us a little bit about that. So I had a sugar daddy when I was in my early 20s. That was part of like one of the many open relationships that I had. Mm -hmm. And he was a kinky motherfucker. He was 16 years older than me. So it's not like he was like, some people think sugar daddies have to be like these old, rich, gross men. And he wasn't. He was 36 at the time. And he was hot. And he and it was a it was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And um you know, the financial aspect of that relationship fizzled out, but we still remained friends 10 years later. And he was a phone sex operator on Night Flirt. It was a way that he sort of satiated his sadistic daddy top side. Mm -hmm. And he wanted me to go in the direction of being a professional femdom, but I had tons of my own reasons of why that just didn't feel right for me. And so he said, well, what about phone sex? And I created an app, an account. It was 2018. I wasn't in the right headspace to take it seriously. But um, the very first call that I had was a female supremacy call. And I fucking love that. And it was so much fun. And um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. And I remember I went back to the guy that I was dating at the time and was like, I just made $200. And it was a lot of fun with phone sex. And he was just like, Oh, I don't like that. Oh, um, what? <laughs> yeah, he he was he was not secure enough to have his girlfriend. He was he was secure enough to be in an open relationship, but he wasn't secure enough to date a woman who earned money from men that were jacking off to her. Oh, wow. So it was like that weird sort of complicated thing. And so I didn't, you know, I was just, I didn't take it seriously. And I was also having a lot of sex at the time and having a really good, you know, kinky life. And it wasn't until the pandemic that happened, right? Yeah. I was single at the time. I was laid off from my job and I was like, well, let me do this cuckolding thing and I would or let me do this phone sex thing. And at the same time, I was just like, I also am pursuing a cuckolding relationship at the same time. So those kind of intersected at the same time, if that makes sense. And And so when I started looking for my my partner, I said, you know, you need to accept that I'm this super hypersexual person that has all of this experience and all of this kink experience. And I'm looking for this cuckold relationship. And this is also how I earn my money. And I found that. That's so awesome. Um, And now you're in the top 1%. That's amazing. You're really fucking good at what you do. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. Congratulations. That's pretty easy. It was easy for me to do. Well, yeah, because you you're passionate about it. You really yes. are interested in it, and yes, that's got to be part of the equation, right? Yes, and and you know, I take it seriously. And men 
really need it. They really do. And so, um, you know, I really take pride in listening to them and giving them whatever they want Mm -hmm. and also being in charge, which is Well, I've come across so many cucks over the years who just want to talk. They just want to (laughs) talk. Like they just want to talk and talk and talk or ask for advice or whatever. Um, And I just don't have like the time or ability to be able to do that all the time. Mm -hmm. But I can understand why they want that space to be able to talk. Because for a lot of these guys that I've come across, they've never spoken about these deep, dark desires that they have. They've never talked about it to a woman before or anyone. And so I can understand how that space that you provide for them is so important and is so like therapeutic for them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think that's like, we're going to be talking about humiliation. And so it's a, it's kind of a way that you can encourage them, which a lot of people don't think that there's encouragement and humiliation. We always think that it's just like, bringing them down and and treating them like shit but there's a there's a lot of encouragement that takes place and i think that when we're in these open relationships or cuckolding relationships or power dynamic kinky relationships we really need to encourage one another like encourage her to fuck those men and encourage him to be you know the cuckold that he wants to be I love that so much because that is one of the most misunderstood parts of cuckolding. I mean, there doesn't have to be humiliation and teasing and cuckolding, I don't think, anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, and there certainly are varying degrees if it is present. And um, But the biggest misunderstanding is that a lot of women in particular assume that in order to be able to, to satisfy your partner's desires for humiliation or teasing, that you have to be a mean-spirited, cruel person. I'm like, no. And that's why I love the part where you said about encouraging him. This is about celebrating who you, each of you are. He, mm-hmm. He's going to celebrate the fact that you are a, a natural-born slut that, and that it is a beautiful fucking thing to 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 have and then you're going to celebrate the fact that you have this natural born cuck who is has the most amazing complex emotional mind like and just being able to uh what crystal welch, welch calls she excavates her cuck's mind i'm just like wow that is that is like amazing because a cuck's mind is like something else something else i'm sure you know all about this <laughs> there there um, they're naughty and they're creative. Very creative. Very and the taboo. If you get turned on by the taboo by taboos in, mm-hmm. in general, that this is like so such a fun game to play. Okay, let's dive into it then. I wanted to talk with you about humiliation slash teasing, whatever word you want to use to to call it, um, because this is a real fucking challenge for a lot of women who are in a cuckolding relationship where he's like, you know, has the courage to bring it up to her. Oh, I I really want you to, you know, sleep with other men and whatever. And I find that a big turn on. And, and she's maybe just like kind of, you know, a bit overwhelmed by that in itself. And then he piles on the, and I want you to tease me about it (laughs) or tease me about size or tease me about, you know, inadequacy or, or whatever. And, and, that is usually where she slams the door on things, where she's mm-hmm. just like, I do not understand that. I don't know it. I don't get it. It sounds fucked up and I want nothing to do with it. And it's a real fucking shame because this is one of the most fun games to play with each other. When you really love each other, if this is his desire, isn't it fucking cruel and mean of you to deny him what he wants and needs to feel fulfilled in his life? like That, that right there. Right. I mean, like, don't you want to fulfill things for the person who you love? I mean, slamming the fucking door and walking in the other direction is kind of a shitty partner thing to do. So I read a quote on Twitter that says you don't get to demand monogamy and chronically fail to meet your partner's sexual and emotional needs. And so like when I think about that, like 
a cuck may feel they they not all cucks, but they may feel that they might not be meeting their partner's needs and they want to give them more. And that's why they want to open up their relationship. But also like he might need a little bit more from you. Yes. And so hopefully you can you can explore that with him. And if not, you know, like I think it's OK if you are at least open enough with one another because to me that's what the goal of all of this is about is is communicating trust and being really open so we could be 100% ourselves with each other if you can't give me the humiliation I I might have to go get it somewhere else I'm so glad you said that because over the years I've come to realize that like there's a lot of guys out there who are really struggling with trying to get their wife to be all all of the things that they want her to be when it comes to like, I want her to tease me. I want her to sexually deny me. I want her to, you know, do all of these things. And it's just not her like that is just not, Mm -hmm. it's not her. And they are like struggling. Like they have no other Mm -hmm. options at all about like, you know, they think in their mind, it's either divorce or it is, she does this for me. And I'm like, why does it have to be like that? Like maybe She will be, you know, a kind, loving and caring person and be like, I can't give this, this to you because it's just not, it's not not who I am. Um, Why don't you go and pay for the experience that it's not going to be the same thing, but at least it's, it's somewhat like similar. And so I don't know why this isn't more of an option out there. So I'm so glad that you brought that up because it really should be an option. If anything, it should be. I think women should be more open about that because it's non-threatening. It's not like you're forming a relationship with this client of yours. You know what I mean? So like, it's just him going out and fulfilling his fantasies, coming back and being like, thank you for giving me that opportunity. Kind of and they thing. do it. They do it with porn. They're doing it without your consent. So you yeah. might as well like be a part of it. Just like you, you know, he wants to be a part of, of the cuckolding aspect. And well, you can also be a part of the humiliation in some sort of way. Yeah, absolutely. And it is a fun game. I mean, if you really, if women were to really truly understand what all of this is and how this all works, like it is just a fun game that you play with each other. You're not mm-hmm. damaging someone, you're not hurting them. So, okay, when it comes to teasing and humiliation, what does that mean for for you, Kayla? So for me, it is Um, It is a chance for me to tap in to an energy that women oftentimes don't get to tap into. It's that power, bad bitch, boss energy, which is really fun. Like we get to tap into that in a few different ways. So it's tapping into that and it's creating a really fun, kinky, playful game that you can that you can engage in daily if that's what you want or you can engage in like weekly but that's really what it is is it's a playful game and there's varying levels of it and i think that that's kind of one of the things that people get really overwhelmed cuz they see kink and BDSM and they're just like, oh, I have to get latex. I got to get whips. I got to do this and I got to do that and that's really not it. You can be sensual, you can be soft and still humiliate him. Yes. And I think once you realize that you don't have to be that mean, cruel bitch, you can be just the woman that you are and just start slow at the bottom of things and just start incorporating a few little things. He's going to be so happy because you don't have to start at the top. You just start at the bottom and just work your way up. You know, it's a journey for both of you. And that's really important too, for you both to like be comfortable with what you're doing, because you have to have that conversation. Like what is humiliation to you? Tell me about it. Like you have to have that conversation with him Mm -hmm. about what's, what's humiliation for him, because what's humiliating to this one might not be humiliating to to that one yes yes like for example um facials 
facials are actually pretty humiliating. If you think about it, you've got cum all over your face. It's, it's, it's a pretty humiliating thing, but like, I fucking love a facial, right? But it can be super humiliating for somebody. And so um, that's just an example of, that's pr- actually a pretty extreme example of a humiliating thing that we probably engage in that we don't even think about. Right. Being on our, being on our knees, getting a facial, being told to suck a dick. Like women engage in humiliation all the fucking time. So it's time that we dish it right back out. <laughs> I love that. I love the fact that you said to like you just start start small. You don't have to start at the top because and and we'll talk a little bit I'm hoping about, you know, how to implement this in a in a an ease, a simple way into into your relationship. But when I, I feel like for a lot of women, when they think about, oh, no, okay, now I have to do this for him. Now I have to do that. Now I have to be this person for him. It is almost like you're at, he's like, she feels like he's adding to her list of all of these things that she has to be and do in her life. And it's just one more chore. Like I remember, I don't remember who it was now, but um, she was saying that She first learned that her husband got really, really turned on by by teasing and humiliations, um, a a small penis humiliation. And so she was like, okay, now I have, I'm going to do this. And then she did her homework and she was like, okay, I got to do all these things. She's like, it was fucking exhausting. It felt like a chore. Like, and (laughs) like that, it shouldn't be like that. It can literally just be one word that you say instead, like mm-hmm. just one word that you say that will like emotionally slap the fuck out of this guy. <laughs> it can also be really exhausting if he gives you nothing to work with. So yes. the cuck has to be vulnerable. Once again, he's already told you that he's into cuckolding. He has to be, he has to man up and be vulnerable once again and tell you what humiliation is to him. What are things that he considers humiliating? What's too much? What's just right? What are some fantasies that he wants to explore? And so an example of how you can kind of get him to work for you while you kind of working for him is make him jack off for you and tell you about why he wants to be humiliated and why he deserves that from you. Like just watch him and get him to tell you these nasty little fantasies that he has and you can just watch him. And then afterwards you can even take it a step further. Like, cause that sounds pretty fun, right? Yes. Oh you my god. Take it a step further and just call him a nasty slut at the end. That's <laughs> it. Like, okay, you nasty slut. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I love it so much cuz like for me the whole a big part of the interesting part about humiliation was seeing his reaction. Like I was like, wow, look the, this guy is like a thousand times turned on. Like it, mm-hmm. that's that's so fun. And so that's a great suggestion if you can just like watch him react to the things that he says are humiliating to him. Oh my God, that's hot. Think about ways to embarrass him because embarrassment's like humiliation light. Mm -hmm. When I also think about humiliation, I think about humility and he is like wanting to lower himself to his queen. So little things like, when my bowl is home, you sit on the floor. You sit on the floor, we're on the couch, and you can sit on the floor. And that creates that sort of like humiliation dynamic. And it's so light. It's, you know, like when you're fucking in the bed, make him get on the ground. Like you can't sit in a chair. You got to be on the fucking ground to watch, you know? And it's just, that's just enough to drive him crazy. <sighs> That is such a great suggestion because that is easy to do. I mean, that mm-hmm. that's so simple and yet there's so much symbolism in that. Mm-hmm. Just the whole height thing. Uh, that, I love what you said about humility. If we can look at it in that lens, I think this is going to be a lot easier for women to digest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so he wants you to be this, this 
not really a tyrant, but he kind of wants you to just kind of be that bad bitch. So it's okay to kind of flex into that a little bit. And you can even start calling him names. And my favorite to recommend that's really easy is slut. Yeah. Right? Just call him a slut. You can even (laughs) say things like, I'm his slut, but you're my slut. Oh, yes. Ownership. (laughs) Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You can call him a bitch. You can call him a pervert. You just, but you have to have those conversations to make sure that like these are things that he likes. Yeah. um, That none of this is triggering because we don't want to like trigger anybody. And that's something that is also really important. We don't want to like trigger them, trigger their trauma. We're not trying to abuse them because we love them. But, you know, just call him a slut. Make him do slutty things. I've been sharing my love for this beautiful relationship dynamic for, well, years now. And I am beyond thrilled to announce that finally there's a matchmaking service for single women and single men who want a loving, cuckolding relationship. It's called Venus Connections. It's a personalized matchmaking service and three-week educational program that's safe, private, and individualized for what you want. Women, you no longer need to endure the headache of filtering through blank profiles and dealing with online creeps and men You can stop wasting time on those fake profiles and women with all sorts of ulterior motives. Venus Connections works for you to find what you want. You can learn more at venusconnections.com. That's venusconnections.com. You deserve the relationship of your dreams. Interracial, black and white, the beautiful and sexy relationship dynamic that we love, now in a lifestyle clothing brand you can wear with pride. Don't sacrifice quality and comfort any longer. With Maison de Neige, you get both in fresh, empowering looks for every occasion, for everyone. From the streets to the sheets and everywhere in between. Check us out at MaisonDeNeige.com. Maison de Neige Couture, modern fashion for the modern revolution. What are some other little little ways that women can kind of like what's the right word I'm looking for? Um humiliate their lover. Yeah, but but in a very kind of like easing into it kind of way. You could bribe him. He wants something from you. Well, <laughs> make him do something that's a little embarrassing. You know, like, hey, can I watch? Sure, you can watch if you kiss me on my ass. Oh, I love that. You can watch if you kiss his boots or something like that, you know, and he, if if he loves you and he's into humiliation, he'll do it, you know, and he's and he'll be getting off on that so much. He really will be. And it's just fun like kiss my ass. <laughs> if, if you want to be in the room, kiss my ass. I love it. I love it. I can see how this would be difficult, though, for women who are not used to being the bad bitch, who are, you know, that's just not been part of their nature. But let me tell you, for all the women who are listening, oh, my God, just try it. Just try it. Just Just that little bit. Just incorporate a few things that feel comfortable to both you and him before you like ramp up and do some dirtier things. Cause like we love the taboo and a part of humiliation is humiliation is taboo. And we kind of like that icky, dirty aspect Mm -hmm. and you're encouraging them to do those nasty things. Right. Cause cream pie cleanup can be pretty humiliating for some guys. Oh yeah. But but you know they they want to do it. But there's also like if if you don't have to give them cream pie cleanup, you can ramp up to that. And you can just like take a condom that has jizz in it 
and just like pour it on a stick and tell him to jerk off. <laughs> that, you know? Like there's so many things you can do, but like you do have to be creative, but you just kind of find the things that are comfortable for y'all. Yeah. Oh my God. I'm so glad I'm having you on the show. This is so much fun. Another okay. thing that I like to do, <laughs> fuck an elf on the shelf, hide magnum condoms, like extra, extra large condoms in surprise places, like <laughs> randomly, you know, like in his, in his blazer pocket, in the, in the glove box of the car. And it just kind of has that little funny moment, right? <laughs> yes. Do that only if you don't have kids living with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's that too. I don't have kids. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. So um, are there any other really fun little tricks that you can do for, for, for women? Yeah. You know, just tell, get him to do things for you. Like he wants to do things for you. He wants to make your experience better. So you can make him prepare the bedroom, you know, or the hotel room. You can really tell him that like, you have really high expectations, baby. I want you to have mood lighting. I want you to do a playlist. I want you to change the sheets. I want everything to be perfect. And you can like do an expectation. And if he's if he exceeded your expectation, there's like so much encouragement there, right? Right. And if he didn't put in some effort, you can just be like, get out the fucking room, bitch. Like, where's the mood lighting? <laughs> okay, so do you like for the woman in that circumstance though? Okay, so let's say her husband did not fulfill the expectations. Is there some sort of discipline or punishment that she should be doling out on him or if he's into humiliation and y'all have had the conversation about what you can and can't do, then yes, you can deny him because they love to be denied. <laughs> they really do. And so you can you can deny him the opportunity to watch, to be a part of it. You can make him listen. You could just do different little things like that. You know, you could lock him up in chastity, um, you know, just be creative with it and have those conversations like with him in advance. And I also like to say, have the conversations with the bull separate too. So you're oh. not springing anything on anybody, like any, any right. surprising things. Like if you're going to put him in panties or, if, or if you're going to be in clothes and the bull is coming over, you can simply have him answer the door completely naked. <gasps> which is very humiliating. Yes. Um, it puts him in his place. But I would say make sure the bull is aware of that and totally consenting to that too, right? Because we don't yeah. want to like throw him off of his energy. And yeah. so that's, you know, just make sure that you have those little conversations and everybody is, everybody including you are all on board to what's taking place. And so, you know, just disclose those things and make sure everybody's on board. And then, you know, maybe because you are exploring this humiliation in your way and the bull is down to sort of, you know, be present for that, you're also introducing ways for him to feel comfortable engaging in that humiliation as well. Mm -hmm. So... We've talked a little bit about like how to implement humiliation into a cuckolding relationship. And I think that we've, you've brought up some amazing suggestions about how to do this in a very kind of gentle, slow way, um, which is super important. Um, what about ramping it up? Like you mm -hmm. talked a little bit about like discipline and stuff like that. What are some of the more extreme kinds of humiliation that can be incorporated? I have, I have so many different things, options to share with you. So you can make him beg and then you could ramp it up, make him beg to watch you pick out outfits. And when you pick out the outfits, you can make him try them on and then you can have him worship you in the outfit. And then you can tell him that he's your slut. <laughs> like you can, you can, you can stop at any point there. It's all humiliating. Yeah. Um, you can put him in something silly. 
um, let him watch you fuck from the floor only and then make him bring cold water to you in the bowl and then make him tell you how hot it was afterwards. Mm. Um, some really nasty things, right, which are kind of fun. Um, you can make him wear briefs that are stained with the bull's cum <laughs> if he's not into panties. Or like the bull sweaty gym shorts and you make him smell them before he puts them on. Oh my God. Or you can even make him wear them to work. <laughs> Shit. Dedicate yourself to getting a pair of like smelly panties for your husband and make him wear them to work. <laughs> right? Uh, those are Those are ramping things up. Um, you know, you could pour, pour the condom on his face, yeah. right? That's pretty humiliating. You give him, uh, a facial. And if you do that, do it slowly, like really indulge in the moment, <gasps> really just slowly tip that condom and, and drip it all over him and call him a nasty slut. <laughs> um, uh, you can make him wash your bull's car and you Ooh. can put a butt plug up his ass and then y'all could be inside like laughing <laughs> while you like both play with the butt plug. Like you can, he can be fucking you. You could be playing with the butt plug and y'all can both be like open the windows and just be laughing. You can also put him in like bunny ears or a funny mask or make <laughs> him like wash the car and something funny like that. Like all of that is like, really kind of silly intense things that you can do is it too much I love it <laughs> the creativity of it I love it yeah, yeah. Oh I was when God. I when I wrote that down I was thinking how funny it would be to have him um wash a car with like a Trump mask on <laughs> <laughs> and the neighbors would be like what the fuck is going on <laughs> That's humiliating on like three different levels because you've got like he's washing the bull's car. That's that's humiliating. And then he is uh, got a butt plug uh, and then he's being washed by the neighbors. And there's like the mask of the Trump mask. <laughs> like, that's yeah, just, oh my God. But, I can see the layers and layers of humiliation mm -hmm. in these situations. You know, there's like an app controlled butt plug that you can control like vibration and stuff like that. It? Get it. Put it up his ass and take him out to dinner. <laughs> so funny. You know, also swingers clubs and bars and um, sex stores are great places to kind of play around with a little public humiliation. Um, oh. you, you know, think about, think about the things you can kind of get away with. You can make him you can call him your cuck in front of people and because it's kind of like an adult or sex positive space, you can kind of get away with it. Yeah. You, can, you can make him go to the cashier at the adult store and say, I need your biggest blackest dildo because my thing is just not that. And I got to get this from a wife. Or ask him where the um, chastity cages are for micro penises. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh God, <laughs> where's this micro penis section in the chastity section? <laughs> oh. oh, my yeah. penis is way too small for these. Yeah, yes. I mean, so you can kind of engage with that. I mean, always be respectful with people and don't take it too far. But some people love it, you know. Yeah. And so those are some kind of places that you can kind of gently start tiptoeing in as long as you're not making other people uncomfortable. Yes. Yes. There's t-shirts that say cuckold on them um, that I've seen some wives make their husbands wear, which I love. Um, and then there's, I think, um, Maison de Neige just came or is coming out with a line of more kind of like subtle cuckold references. Uh, and I think she's using like a great horned owl always watching <laughs> as like the, 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 the animal that's going to be for cucks, but more kind of subtle 
hinting towards cuckold kind of t-shirts and stuff like that. So you could always start with that. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, just the straight up cuckold t-shirts. I've seen those too. Those are awesome. Having to wear those. Yeah. Like um, I made a guy do this and they love it. Um, If you go to a strip club with them, um, which is kind of fun to do, but but if he goes to a strip club by himself, um, you can make him give money to like the bartender and ask the bartender for consent. Like, I'll give you $40 if you let me tell you a little dirty secret of mine. And she'll say yes. And and he could just be like, I have a small dick. <laughs> <laughs> and he shared that with her and she gets to laugh and it, and she gets the money. Okay. So I bet that happens more often than we would think. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like She's said, probably gonna be like, I've heard it all already. <laughs> just, just ask for consent. You know, like, yeah. hey, can I have permission to tell you something like silly and dirty? Yeah, about me, not you. Yeah, that's a good point. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so I, apparently you have like an entire list of like ways to implement humiliation. Is that right? I've been working on one for you and it's, yeah. And it's just something that people can download. They can kind of, you know, see this for inspiration. Mm -hmm. And I've kind of tried to make it cuckold specific to, um, and kind of a little mild as well, but I guess further down the list, you might have some like really nasty things, but (laughs) you know, (laughs) If somebody's into humiliation, don't don't look at them like they're disgusting. Just be curious and have that conversation with them and and start small before you get into dirty things, you know, because dirty things could be even like some guys really want dirty things. And so you can like put your piss in a water gun and squirt him with it. And it's, and it's, it's just laughing. Like it's just both of y'all, you are encouraging him to be that dirty slut for you in these ways. And it really just gets him off. And if you like laughing and you like pleasing him because he pleases you, then this is, this is, this is fun. Yes. I love that you said, um, be curious. I, I completely agree for all the women listening out there. Just have some curiosity to learn about this. That is the least you can do for the person who you love. And you don't have to do it all at once. Like you can enjoy becoming that sexually empowered woman and you can just tell him like, look, I'm not ready for humiliation yet, but when I am, get ready, bitch. I'm coming (laughs) for you. I love it. I love it. But, But for the moment, let me just enjoy all this dick. (laughs) <laughs> yes. That's a very good point in that yeah, you don't she doesn't have to like do it all, you know. Mm-hmm. It can be, and, and then it, it should be that way. Whatever she feels comfortable with and whenever on her timeline. Being in charge is really kind of what he, he may want from you a little bit and so just step into that role and just kind of find yourself in that. And it's fun. It really is. And it's, it would just like having sex with other men can do so much for your self-confidence. I think that being, being this kind of like teasing, loving bully to your partner who gets off on it is a really liberating experience for both of you as well. Oh, totally. I remember in the beginning, I I remember like thinking, oh, this guy wants me to say this thing about a small penis humiliation. So I I have to say it. I remember thinking that and it was like a task, you know, like, okay, I, he wants me to say this. So I'm going to say it in the way that I think he wants me to say it. And then over the years, I just began to just be honest. <laughs> soon as I did, just be honest. Okay. Your dick is definitely not as big as I would want it to be. <laughs> then, like, I didn't feel like it was a task. I felt like it was just being, just being honest, just say what you really feel. And I think maybe that is so empowering for women when you don't have to worry about the consequences of saying exactly how you feel about it. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, like when he's fucking you and he's like, oh, I'm so deep inside you. Just laugh at him and be like, you don't know what deep is, baby. Like, I can't really even feel you. So (laughs) I'm not I'm not with you because you go deep. (laughs) We go deep. We go deep in other ways, baby. (laughs) Oh, my God. Oh, this episode is so much fun. Okay. (laughs) Um, Any last kind of things that you want to talk about before we wrap this up today? You know, just um, have those conversations, make sure that he's really like it's humiliating for him to tell you all of these things. And it's also kind of also humiliating for him to deal with the fact that he needs this. Mm -hmm. That's also kind of like this weird thing. And I don't know if women go through that, too. Like, oh, I need all this dick. You know, why am I this way? Well, he goes through that, too. And so just when you get to engage in that with him, it can intensify your relationship and your intimacy. It can be a lot of fun for you and it can keep him closer to you, which is really where where he wants to be. He wants to be so close to you and he wants, he doesn't want to have to go to another woman because he like worships and idolizes you. So if you can, if you can really talk to him, like, what's, why are you this way? Okay. You want small penis humiliation. When did you feel that your dick was really small? (laughs) You know, what's, tell me about some disgusting fantasies that you had. Let me look at your porn browser history, like start taking control and, and, and penetrating him with those questions and you can start breaking him open and seeing what's on the inside which is which I think is hot and beautiful and and special but you get to kind of play with those insecurities or a lot of guys are super confident and they just they it's not that they have insecurities about it they just want to they they're in so much power and they're in so much they're in charge with their life they just want you to take them down a few notches humility yeah yeah Yeah. so just make it happen if that's what you want to do if that's what you want to do yeah well I I have always said like I said earlier that a cuck's mind is a beautiful thing but I think that cucks are so brave and courageous because they have they have the courage to really explore those uncomfortable feelings, whether that be uncomfortable because she's fucking this other guy when society says you, she shouldn't or mm-hmm. that, you know, sh- she's wanting guys who are bigger size than you or whatever. They don't shy away from those uncomfortable feelings. They actually dive into them. Mm-hmm. That is amazing. Like that is very courageous. That's something to be proud of. So I know a lot of guys really struggle. I feel like it's said. like sexual shadow work in ways like heckolding and humiliation. It's like, I feel these things, but just because I might feel some of these things and I might get off on some of these things, it doesn't define who I am, but please tell me I'm worthless because, (laughs) because they, they might want to hear that or that might be a trigger word for them. So, right. Right. (laughs) Oh my God. Okay. This has been so fucking fascinating. Kayla, thank you so much for joining me on the show. And and you are just such a great resource for all of this. So thank you for that. And where can people find out more information about you, about this list, about um, where to find you? I have a little website that you can go. It's phone sex dom d-o-m-m-e dot v-i-p that's kind of where you could drop your email um and find links to get in touch with me i will be launching a blog in the future that's going to dive in deeper with about all of these different things you know it's just that's a lot of work so and i'm not there yet yeah phone sex dom dot v-i-p Wonderful. Okay. I'm going to have all of your links and everything in the show notes for today's episode. So for everyone listening, dying to know how to find, where to find you, where to go, just have a look in the description notes for today's episode. Kayla, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope maybe we can continue this conversation together on Moan. 
<laughs> yes, that would be a lot of fun. Um, you know me, I love Moan and I'm actually on Moan because of your podcast. So thank really? you so much oh, wow. for that. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so awesome. That's great to know. Okay. Yes, let's do it. We'll set a date and we'll, we'll continue this conversation about humiliation and teasing on the Moan app. So for all of you listening who haven't downloaded it, Go and download it today. It's available for everybody, iPhone, Android, whatever the fuck. Just go and download it and join in on the conversation. Catch it live. Get notifications in the app. All right, that's it for today. Thank you so much, Kayla. Thank you, Venus. All right, that's going to be it for today's episode. Thank you so much for joining me. Make sure you go to venuscuckoldress.com. You can subscribe to the podcast, register for Pillow Talk events, ask a question for the show, and there's events and resources on there as well. So don't miss that. Don't forget, every Tuesday on Full Swap Radio, the Venus Cuckold Just podcast is on at 5 p.m. and 11 p.m. Central Time. They have a new app, so you can just listen in that way. Super easy. If you're interested in dating in this lifestyle, make sure you check out Venus connections.com that is venus connections is a private matchmaking service for finding love in this kind of relationship now there's also courses available if you're interested in learning about cuckolding or dating in this lifestyle you can go to cuckoldingcourses.com that is going to be it for today's episode i hope you loved it and i'll see you next time